Hello, and welcome to this instructional video from Arabesque Instruments. The subject of this video is machine creation and route data collection using Digivive MX software. These instructions are applicable to versions M20 and M30, both of which have vibration analysis and data collection capabilities. Upon opening Digivibe MX software, you'll see the example database with example data contained in the software. It's helpful to look it over to see some of the software's capabilities, but when you are prepared to start creating your own machines and collecting your own data, go to the database tab. Select New Database. Give your new database a unique name. And select Save. Confirms the name that you've selected. And now we have a new database with no information, which we now need to populate with machines. So to begin creating new machines and new database structure in this new blank database, we go to New Machine, also here on the Database tab, and this opens the Equipment Configuration window. The Equipment Configuration window is used to identify all levels of database structure. There are three levels of hierarchy in the software, the company level, the area level, and the machine level. All new levels will be created here. So, whether we are a service provider or an end user, we can put in the name of the company that we're working on, or the location of the company where we're going to be doing the work. In this case, Airbest. The area, whether it is an area of the plant where you will be collecting data, or perhaps a geographic location if you have customers with several different sites, as we do here. So I will input New York for our New York facility. And whatever unique identification number it is that you use for the first machine you're going to build. Now from here, we started the creation of this new machine we do have 3D modeling and ODS capabilities built into the Digivive MX software. There are a number of 3D models available preloaded into the software to select and choose from. So if we select the 3D model, we can see some of the preloaded 3D models available for ODS modeling. Centrifuges, cooling towers, some motors, a few others, and some pumps. So let us say hypothetically we are going to collect data on a centrifuge fan that has this type of belt configuration. You can highlight that, select OK, and based on this equipment configuration, the software knows that there will be usually four analysis points which would be of course your motor outboard, motor inboard, fan shaft pulley side or inboard and fan shaft outboard or fan side. It will be a belt transmission in this case an ISO class 2 machine be over 500 horsepower. 
On the right side of the screen, we can assign values to each point that we're going to collect. We can assign the RPM to be collected at the point, say 1800. By default, based on the machine configuration of equal pulleys, that value will populate to all four points. Now if we did actually have a reduction, we can always go into point three and four on the fan shaft and change the values, which will also populate both points. Of course, if you're not using the 3D model, you may have to input these all manually. There's additional information we can assign. Uh, we see here that by default, all four axes are loaded for ODS collection, horizontal, vertical, axial, and the reference point. If we do want to change or remove some of these points, for example, most data collectors do not collect axial in both directions on a piece of equipment. They'll collect one or the other we can open the point we want to remove a collection from, simply uncheck it, and if there are any other additional values that we would like to manually enter while we're on the route, we can assign those here under extra value labels, things such as line pressure or temperature. Select OK to save those. Now, if we want to label in the description the location of these points, we can again hit Set. And in the description block, we can have the motor outboard. Motor inboard. Fan inboard, and fan outboard. At this point, we can also assign the bearing numbers if they are known, and that will allow us to view the bearing fault frequencies based on the speed of the collection in our fast Fourier transformation spectrum. So if we do know the bearing numbers, we hit the search block, which opens up the bearing database. We input the bearing number or a partial bearing number, and we get a list to choose from. We do have an SKF6303. We see that these are all of the fault frequency calculations for the four bearing fault frequencies. If we don't know, but we can get from the manufacturer what these frequency uh, ratios may be, we can enter that data manually and create the new bearing. Select. And we can assign bearings to each of our points. Down here in the lower right, where it says machine code, Digi5MX software is loaded with an automated barcode generator. Uh, working in conjunction with most tablet computers, you can use the camera to scan the barcodes and this can be used to basically create a barcode style route for route data collection. Um, it is an option in the program, does not have to be used, but it's there if you choose to use it. So we have created our first machine. 
You select OK. And now we can see in the database that creating the machine has given us our first location, our first area, and our first machine. Now that we've created our first machine, if we have several of these similar machine types to collect, we don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel every single time. What we can do is select this machine that we've already created, right click, select copy equipment, and we get a new piece of equipment in the equipment configuration with all the same values, same 3D model, same analysis points in class. See the transmission has changed back to direct, so we do want to change that back to belts. Assign the new machine's ID number. And if nothing else has changed, we can select OK. And we now have two machines, both of the same class. And that process can be repeated. Each time you have an original machine type to create, start with new machine and build it. And if you have duplications after that, simply right click, copy the machine, and assign it the new ID number of the next one. Now, if you want to go collect data on this, there is a route data collection option in the software. We'll go back to the start menu. See here we have an option for new route. In order to create a new route, we select the machines that we want to collect. In this case, we're going to collect both of them. Once the machines that you want to collect are checkmarked, down here, you can reorder the machines if necessary. If in a logical collection of the route, machine two is before machine one, then we can simply move machine two ahead of machine one in the route. And if we are happy with the route structure, select new route. And it takes us immediately to route data collection mode. And then the first machine would be machine two, starting on the first point in the horizontal direction. At this point, you only need to place the accelerometer and press record. As you can see, when the first point is collected, it immediately moves to the next point. The tablet controls do increase the size of these controls up above the route area for easier use in tablet mode. Select record again. And basically just continue until the route has been completed and all the points are collected. It is possible to skip a point if you come up on a machine that is perhaps shot down or uh, for whatever other reason cannot be collected. Simply jump ahead to the next point that you can collect and hit record. And when the last point has been collected, you receive the notification that the captures are finished. Simply click OK to save all the data and remove the machines from the list. And now we're at machine one. We'll go 
complete it. And we are complete. It's important to mention that once a route has been created and completed, it isn't necessary to recreate the same route over and over again. Once a route has been created, it can be saved and retrieved for future collections. Let's close the route analysis tab for just a moment. Go back to the start menu. If we want to save a permanent route of these machines, simply go to route mode and here in the routes menu is then the option to export. If we export the route, assign it a name so we remember which route it is that these machines belong to, and save it as a text file. We can close this route now. And at any other time, if we want to jump immediately to go collect that route, here on the left hand side, simply come down to these quick tabs at the bottom of the page, select route, and this little folder icon, import list, select that. We find the route list that we created earlier for the route we want to go collect. Hit open and it immediately opens to the desired route. And just as we did before, start with the first machine, first point, collect them all in order. As each machine is completed it will drop off the list. When the list is complete, job is done. Collecting data in Digivibe MX does not necessarily require route data collection. There are other ways to go collect data, or what we may call off-route data, as needed. So let's close this route analysis tab again. Back at the start menu, and the list of options on the left hand side is new analysis. You can initiate a new analysis immediately at any time. Simply select new analysis, place the accelerometer on the point that needs to be collected. Time is currently set for three seconds by default. You can increase that time if you need to or if you want to do real-time monitoring either set the timer to zero and Digivibe MX will collect continuously until told to stop or you can simply hit the real-time button and Digivibe MX will collect in real time again until such time as you tell it to stop. It's important to remember that Real-time data collections do not save from beginning to end. The only portion of the collection that will be saved is what is visible in the window while you are recording. So if I were to start this real-time data collection, you can see right now that this machine is in a controlled state running at a pretty stable setting but if we introduce a dynamic event once that waveform clears the viewing area that event has been lost 
So in order to capture that for later analysis, you would have to stop the collection while it is occurring. And this data can be saved. Now, if we want to save this to a machine that already exists in our database, we can do that. We simply come up here to the upper left hand side of the screen where this 3D icon is. That is the file manager tab. We select it and select save. We have a lot of options as how we can save this particular data collection. We can save it in ANL format, UFF58 format, ASCII format. We can export it as a WAV file. We can export it simply as an image to be attached to an email or Word document. Or we do have the option to save this data collection in the current database which we will do. And we can navigate the file tree down to the machine that we collected this data on, the point and the axis. And we can save this channel one collection. If there are any notes we wish to attach, we can do that here. save and this off route data collection has now been saved to machine 2.1 horizontal axis where we collected it we can close this we can close the analysis window and if we can return to the database open machine 2.1 horizontal we can see the off-ramp transient event that we just collected, as well as the last route data collection. So using these tools, you can create new machines, assemble them into routes for route data collection. You can save those routes and recall them later to be recollected. And at any time, using new analysis, you can simply walk out to a machine, take a data collection, and save it to that machine wherever it exists in your database.